<laughs> Good afternoon, Coach. I'm just curious with the challenges of having that kind of a layoff from the 21st of December to January 1st and with the kids being gone and now back, what's that like for you and the staff kind of getting them ready to play such an important part of your schedule? Well, you know, uh, and Oklahoma has, you know, they played a day later, I guess, yep. uh, than us. So, you know, I think everybody, um, you know, has that, that same break. Usually it's it's a week, and that's why we were excited when we lost, uh, you know, Morgan State that – we were able to find North Florida just to get that game in there and keep that game routine. I think is important. Um, you know, now when the game gets canceled yesterday, we get it, you know, they're here, we get a call early in the morning. Um, it doesn't look like we're going to play. We had, you know, get with the doctors, the trainers, the head coach, and, and it just doesn't work out. So now you got to take, tell the players and, um, you know, it, so we, what we tried to do yesterday was simulate a game and we played about, uh, 25, 30 minutes of live action. Um, we had gone pretty hard on drills and stuff and preparing for North Florida the first, uh, three days after break. Um, and then today, cause you, you don't want to go, we got back, you know, started Sunday. We don't want to, you know, kill them. We want some fresh legs. So today we just basically did a, you know, little preparation, video, weight, shooting, and try to stay off, stay, you know, away from pounding and then come back tomorrow and hopefully have a good sharp practice and then head down there. So uh, it's, you know, it's a tough thing. It, I, I told the guys actually the day before, just I, I, I did not anticipate North Florida. I, want, I actually called Coach Spiro on, on, Tuesday, I said, did they get here? And once they got here, I felt pretty good about it. But that day, the emphasis was, and it was more going into the Big 12 season, was about mental toughness and having that maturity. And uh, because, you know, this might not be the last time we have a cancellation. Um, you got a very, very tough league. You got to stay. You got to continue to be ready. One of the things we've talked about all year, and I've sent it to, actually sent it to Dean Wade, a couple times you got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready and that's that's going to be important for everybody in our league if you're going to have success and compete in that top half of the league you know with this with the not only with the covid and the, un, the unknowns you have the cancellations but the tough teams that and the different defenses all that you're really going to have to stay ready and and that maturity is going to be really really important I guess finally for me, um, we talk about this year in and year out, but I'm just wondering if it isn't even more so top to bottom this year in the league with balance. I mean, you look at the the net ratings and Ken Palm and all of those things. It just doesn't seem like you have a lot of separation. And with that said, we all know there are really good teams at the perception being at the top of the league. Yes, I uh and, you know, it's, it started when I first got here. And again, I didn't know a lot about the league. I had been brainwashed. I grew up in Wisconsin. So big 10, I was in the big 10 for 27 years between Purdue and Illinois. And that's all I knew. And when I got here, I still remember at, at right at Christmas time, we had beaten Florida. I came back and we got some national attention. And, and one of the writers uh, that, that called me, uh, they said, you know, guess who's what league is number one in the, the RPI. And this was right on Christmas time. And I, I said, you know, I'm not sure to be honest. He goes a big 12 and he goes, does that surprise you? And that was, you know, 10 years ago. And it's pretty much stayed the same the last, <laughs> last uh, 10 years, I think eight of the 10, we or eight of the or seven of the nine seasons. We've been number one in the RPI or net. The other two, we've been number two. And you always think, gosh, you know, everyone's losing this guy, that guy. You think it's going to be a little easier, but it isn't. And um, we lost pretty good players from last year's team. We lost the nat national championship team has a bunch of guys in the NBA, and they're still number one. So it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Great coaches, different styles. Um, you no, know, it's just uh, – you know, it's a great league and it's very, very challenging. And, and that's what we're trying to help our guys understand how hard it is. 
and and the grind from game to game is is in that maturity and mental toughness and staying ready is going to be so so important. Thanks, Wyatt. Okay, Kelly, let's go ahead. Uh, Bruce, I know you guys are always careful with COVID and stuff, but are you taking any extra steps or measures now to make sure that you guys don't lose any games moving forward? Yeah, there, there's no doubt. Um, you know, we, instead of the last few days since we got back, we're watching video out on the court, um, you know, staying separated. Um, you know, we haven't, the only meals we've been eating in restaurants is when we get a private room. Otherwise, we have food delivered. Um, you know, we're trying to be as smart as we can. We, we encourage masks um, when we can. Um, obviously, I've been begging and pleading to get the booster uh, for, you know, all the players and the, and the staff. And uh, we've made some pretty good strides. The new CDC policy uh, actually, you know, if you don't get the booster, it could put you in a bind as a contact tracer. Um, you know, contact trace that you would have to sit out. So, uh, you know, that's the, we're hoping over the next week or so we can get basically everybody to that point. Uh, so we're, you know, we're working on it and see what happens. But every, every day, I mean, there's obviously there's even people that have been vaccinated and have boosters have uh, had the unfortunate of testing positive. So, uh, and you no, know, you just don't know, but you got to help yourself and do your best you can. And, uh, you know, hope it, you know, hope we're okay moving forward. And, uh, Oklahoma first time in a while, you're not going to be going up against Lon Kruger. They look quite a bit different than last season, but what, what's your initial read on them and, and Porter Moser now that he's there? Well, they have a, you know, Porter's obviously a great coach, uh, did an unbelievable job at Loyola, uh, you know, I think he talks about it all the time, his experience with Coach Majerus and his attention to detail and uh, his defensive system. Uh, you know, he's kind of taken that and, and, and made, it, made it his kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I, I, his teams have always been really, really sound fundamentally, and they're a really good defensive team. And, you know, but he, it's kind of funny if you study, start studying their stats and watching them, Right now, they're really, really good offensively, and they have they got some older guys. They have good balance. Um, they they execute well. They they've shot the ball unbelievable. You know, fifty one as a team, uh, thirty six from three. The main guys are shooting 40, 42, 43 from three. You know, so you got you got uh, you know they they you know I guess Martin being the coach at Oklahoma, Lon. Lon got Lon used to be a defensive coach and then he became an offensive coach once he got to the Sooners. And maybe that's something Porter's doing too. They do it in football. They score a lot of points. They score a lot of points here right now. So the, uh, but they, you know, they, he's done a nice job of, you know, those couple guys that were pretty good last year, Harkless and, and Hill and Gibson end up staying. He had gold wire wire. Who's uh you know, really sound, got a good body sound point guard for them, knows how to play, understands the game. And then, and then obviously Groves gives you that versatile big guy that it, it makes it tough. And when he's shooting 58 and 40 from three, it's pretty impressive. And he can pass the basketball and got a positive assist turnover. So uh, I think the big challenge for them and, you know, and I, I for hopefully, it's something that we, you know, will be just their bench, their development of their bench and him having confidence in them. So, uh, but it's, uh, you know, we'll, we got a, got a challenge. You got to, their defensive system makes it hard to score and they've been scoring the ball and shooting the ball well. So you're going to have to stop them also. And uh, it, as of right now, are all your guys ready and, and healthy to play on Saturday? Yeah, as of right now, but every day is a new, <laughs> new experience. We have not had much luck, you know, and uh, Wyatt asked about, you know, the challenges we've had, but it just seems like something happens all the time. And, you know, whether it was, you know, Davion with pneumonia, you know, then it was Nigel being out, and then it was Selton out, and then Mike out, and 
you know, so we, you know, I, I just wish we could get some continuity, but uh, there's nothing you can do about it. And you just, just hope, hope we, uh, you know, can keep everyone healthy on the court. All right. Well, hey, best of luck on Saturday, Bruce. All right. Thank you. Uh, next question to Cole. Cole, you're ready. Hey, hey, Coach. Yeah, I was just uh, – I had a question about, about Davion. I know you had kind of uh, talked about him a few times, maybe potentially being ready right around this time. Has there been any consideration of inserting him into the starting lineup at all? Uh, not right now. I think he uh, – you know, Casey's played pretty well, done a nice job. I wish Casey was a little more consistent. I wish both of them would be, uh, you know, more consistent. I I like what Davion's done the last – you know, 10 days, two weeks before, you know, before we went home for break, um, you know, he's, he's definitely got his conditioning better. He's getting his legs. He's feeling more confident about himself, um, being more assertive. Uh, and, you know, if he continues to do that and do it consistently, then we'll, we'll consider it. But, you know, I, I hope it's one of our strengths that we have uh, two big guys uh, and, you know, Logan has been fine for, you know, some spot minutes, depending on matchups. And, and we finally, I think Carlton yesterday played more basketball, live basketball than he's probably done since he left the junior college. So, um, you know, that, you know, that's a positive, you know, and the coach, a couple of coaches grabbed me this morning, our staff and just said, Hey, do you think maybe we can find a way to get him, you know, get him involved. So I, I hope our, depth and the versatile, you know, they're versatile, different guys, uh, versatility of, of our big guys. I hope it becomes a strength for us as we move forward. And then uh, there's been lots of cancellations uh, just around the country with bowl games, obviously basketball as well. Uh, a lot of that has to do with contact tracing. Has, has your testing protocols, have your guys' testing protocols changed at all? And kind of what's your opinion on that? Well, the CDC – uh, it actually was why North Florida uh, canceled the game. So they, it was all the contact tracing and every county has a different, every state, every county, every school, depending on the league, they all have different policies. And obviously the country CDC makes proposals um, or, or suggestions there, what they think should happen. Uh, then the state has to decide, the county has to decide, and then the leagues have to decide. And uh, the, the CDC came out with that recommendation uh, a couple days ago, and that's what North Florida went off of. Our league now, uh, they, they might be meeting right now, our, our team doctors, Dr. Goral has done an unbelievable job, our head of, our head of Lafine and and he's been ahead of the COVID protocol last year for the league, actually for baseball, NCAA baseball. I think he was in charge of that also. So he's put a lot of extra time in. Um, and I know he's been analyzing the return to play, uh, contact tracing, all that. So our contact tracing, obviously, if you're a roommate, if you're in the car, you know, you drive to Kansas City for two hours, you're contact traced. There's, but they're, you know, the on the court, they have not, uh, they have not acknowledged that being a contact trace. Um, you know, the locker room, if you hang out for an hour in the locker room after and you're sitting next to the guy, you would be a contact trace. So there's some rules on that. But uh, the other thing that over supersedes all that, obviously, is the vaccine and hopefully the booster will, that'll make the difference, especially with the new recommendation. So we'll see what happens. We, we hope, I, You've seen the NFL, the NBA, the ACC came out with something. Uh, hopefully the Big 12 will have something out here in the next day or so. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Uh, next, next question to Michael Goins. Hey, Bruce. Is uh, practice, workouts, lifting in terms of Davion Bradford, is that more beneficial than a game as far as conditioning right now? Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, but he's got himself where he's played up, you know, getting where he's 17 minutes, I think, one of the last games, you know, and, and we had always hope, 
you know, before the season, if you're looking at it, maybe Davion's 24, 25, Casey's 15 or 16, something like that. Um, obviously, it's been, you know, with his uh, situation, it's been a little different. But, uh, you know, the nice thing, and I just acknowledge him, he was here early. Him and Casey were here early this morning uh, working with AJ, our strength coach. Um, he has done, I, I would tell you, over the last month, we sat down at the end of when we got back from Kansas City with him a couple times. Um, coach Lowry, uh, AJ, our strength coach, myself, Luke Sauber. We just said, you got to help yourself. And, and he's been coming in extra I, I, at least four days, maybe five days a week when we have games. He doesn't come in. But, uh, you know, he, he, he knew it and he knew he had to help himself and uh, he, he stepped up to that challenge. But there's no doubt practice going up and down has been, has been beneficial for him. And, uh, you know, we kind of went twice a day the first two days. So all the, I, I hope it all helped him. We were worried about his, that four days without anything. And uh, he, you know, I'm sure he gained a couple pounds from some holiday cookies, but uh, it wasn't too bad. And in terms of OU, you mentioned their shooting percentage. I think they've got five players at nine points or above. Yeah. What does that do to you defensively? Well, they, you know, great balance. Uh, you know, you got almost really close to five guys in double figures. Uh, it's amazing. 9.8, 9.7, 9.2. .9 so uh, that they spread you out. That's part of their success. They, they, they know each other. It seems like for only being together, uh, they move the basketball. They're averaging 17 assists. Now they do turn it over a little bit. Um, you know, and, and but they they do move it and get it to the guys in the right spots. Uh, but it, it, so it makes it tough on your defense. You can't say, oh, we're going to take him out of it or, uh, you know, take this guy. You know, if we can just shut him down, we're going to be OK because they got a lot of different ways they can come at you. And, and then with with uh, Tanner Groves, just they can play through him like a point guard, kind of like we used to do with Dean. And that that really makes it tough on teams when you got that versatility of a big guy like that that can that can pass and shoot and and spread the defense. When Gibson started in North Texas, he's on year two at OU. What kind of progress have you seen from him as a player? Well, obviously, he can. His number one thing is shooting the basketball, and uh, about a little seventy five percent of his shots have you know, come, come from the three, but I think in the last two years, um, putting on the floor a little better, uh, you know, seven, you know, two to one assist turnovers, uh, one of their leading guys getting steals. Uh, so he's, uh, he's just, you know, older, mature guy that, uh, you know, kind of knows, fit, figured out his role playing with confidence um, and obviously shooting the ball really, really well. Thanks for your time, Bruce. Yep, thank you. Other questions for Coach? Uh, just to follow up on that uh, bench scoring note, uh, the average right now is the best through 11 games since 2012-13, so uh, notable. Okay, any other questions? Calling, going once, going twice. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time. Safe travels to everyone going to bowl games and going to OU. Uh, stay safe there. Yeah. Coach, uh, I'll, I'll have the uh, TV guys on just momentarily. If you want to log on and then log back on, I can text you. That'll be fine. Okay. Thank you, guys. Stay safe.